case will be created and I am considering both the operations or functions which are a part of that web service, right? I'm just going to say OK. It will ask for a name for my test suit. I'm going to say calc underscore test suit. You can leave it with the default name that it is suggesting. So I'm going to say OK. Right? Let us wait. I see a lot of uh, questions. Um, I have uh, planned to take the questions in the end of this session. So please bear with me till then. Right. So once your test suit is created, you will get the test suit window. Now, if I click on this test suit uh, button, if I click on this collapse button, I'm going to get two set of test cases. One is for the add method. Another one is for the subtract method. Now, if I further go inside, I'm going to have test steps for each of them. So, if I go to the test step, you see here, I have the SOAP request which will call the add method. Similarly, here also, I have the SOAP request which will call the subtract method. I'm repeating what we did. We right clicked on this particular web service link that was created. And then we said generate test suit and we went ahead with the default option that is one test case for each operation and we considered all the operations in that web service and we said OK. And the test cases got created like this. When we went inside the test case, we had the test step details. When I went inside the test step details, I had the SOAP request for that particular operation for which this test case was created. So now when I double click on this SOAP request, here is where the picture comes. Right? So when I double click on this SOAP request, you see here my arguments, the inputs to that method are filled with question mark. That is because when we said create test suit, we told SOAP UI to create empty SOAP request. This SOAP request, if you fill proper data here, will fetch you a corresponding SOAP response from your web service, which is hosted in this endpoint. The URL you see here is nothing but it is the endpoint in which your web service is hosted right now. So it will, if uh, for your uh, uh, web service, it will be whatever is your company's URL for that web service. For me, it is this URL, my Tomcat URL, where I have deployed my web service. This endpoint indicates, this endpoint indicates the web service deployed location. And this SOAP request that you are seeing here is an empty SOAP request which has no input data filled. But if I fill a formal input data here, this input will be sent to the web service at this endpoint and I will get to see the reply from that web service in the pane on my right side. Okay. So now I am going to try giving input. So I am going to say say 23 plus 13 okay uh, if all is well when I send this uh, request it should reach this web service and I should get the sum of these two numbers because I have taken the add operation now so we should uh, roughly be getting 36 so to send this request to the web service specified in this endpoint you just have to click on the submit request button okay Submit. So you see here the operation is happening here. Okay. Yes, uh, we were lucky. And uh, yeah, we have got to see that the result 36 is returned here. Right now what we have done is we have just tested the basic functionality of the add operation. If I give two numbers and submit that SOAP request to the web service in this endpoint, am I getting the sum of those two numbers. Yes, right now I am getting the sum of those two numbers. Okay, let us uh, close this for a moment now and let us try the same for subtract now. Okay, so now let us see. I am going to give two numbers. 
32 minus 12. Okay, so let me submit this request and see. Okay, you see here we have got the difference between 32 and 12 that is 20. So a simple SOAP UI role is nothing but once you give the visual file URL, it generates the SOAP request that will trigger the input of that particular web service and it gives you the SOAP request that is given back by that web service. So with this, uh, with this simple example, we have just tested the add operation and the subtract operation of our calculator web service, right? So the other thing that you should uh, be concentrating here is, see, you have this test suit now. Uh, you, are, you If you go to the test step level, uh, you can add test cases to the test suit. Uh, let me just go to the uh, test suit level. Okay. Okay, I am in the test suit level. Uh, once I create a test suit, my test suit is going to cons uh, consist of test case 1 and test case 2. Right? So if I want to add a set of test steps, my test steps is nothing but whatever I add under this test step head. So right now for this particular test it is enough that I have the SOAP UI request. I don't need anything else other than that. Okay. On the other hand there are situations where you can add any specific set of steps for your test case. Okay. So when you, when you actually, when you actually run a particular script, when you actually send a particular SOAP request, you just initially start with the empty SOAP request that is generated by SOAP UI itself based upon the visual URL you have given. And then you fill it with data, you send it and you check if the correct response has come. This is a very, very primitive level of testing. Now, if, let us see what happens if we take into account um, uh, a different uh, uh, test uh, uh, test suit uh, altogether. That is, I am going to take into account a web service that we did not design. Okay. Let us see if it works same for that also. So I have uh, bookmarked a web service for our exercise today. Okay. Um, this is... Uh, the weather forecaster. Let us take a simple one for now. Um, okay. Um, okay. Let us take the currency converter service. Okay. This is the visual URL of a uh, web service which converts currencies based upon the um, uh, uh, to from and to conversion uh, specification that we give. So I am copying this URL. Now I um, go and create a new SOAP UI project. M mind you, my workspace still remains SOAP UI underscore ser SOAP underscore services. I'm just creating a new project under that service. So I'm saying currency converter. I'm pasting the visual URL. Instead of you going and right clicking on the uh, web service interface and creating the test suit. If you click on this checkbox which says create a test suit for the imported visual, it will automatically create a test suit for you. Okay, this is an alternate way of creating test suit. Now I say okay. Right, so automatically we got this. Uh, test suit. So this time I'll just try to change this option. A single test case for uh, um, uh, the entire application. That is what I'm trying to do here. And I'm saying OK. And I can give a name to my test suit. And I say OK. Right. So now if I open my test suit, my test suit is ready. 
okay uh, now I open my test steps okay so you see here we have got the X, uh, empty SOAP response which was generated by SOAP UI by understanding the structure of the WSDL file which we gave at this endpoint. Okay. So now if I fill this with input say INR. Okay. Let us say USD to INR. Right. So now to submit this request I just say submit and you see that we get the response here right so in this way you can do tests for any number of uh, any number of web services any uh, any type of uh, um, uh, functionality the web service can have the working is going to be same right now the question here is I am repeating I am repeating the same thing telling that there is a soap, a soap message which is generated by um, SOAP UI. That is the SOAP request which is generated by SOAP UI. And when we submit it, it reaches the web service specified at this endpoint. And we get to see the SOAP response. So now the question comes, how does a SOAP request or a SOAP message looks in general? Like we can see here directly, a SOAP message is not a big magic. It is a simple XML file. But it takes precedence because of the type or the structure it follows. Okay. So now let us get to understand the SOAP, UI, a SOAP message elements. Okay. Which will help us to go ahead further easily. So let me just uh, take out a small... Uh, PPT. Okay. Um. Okay, so let me just um, show you a small uh, PPT on that. Hmm. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, a little bit on soap now. Uh, SOAP is a simple XML based protocol. Uh, so it basically allows information exchange over HTTP. Like your web services, SOAP is again platform and language independent. It is completely XML based. Uh, uh, SOAP we know it stands for simple object access protocol. It is very simple. It is Since it is a simple XML file, transporting it through HTTP is a very easy thing. It is platform independent that makes it more powerful. And it appears in a small part of a HTTP message. So basically, as long as your web service is not very data intensive, this SOAP is a very good alternate. Right? So the, the SOAP messages basically have three characteristics uh, extensibility neutrality and independency so you can use a soap xml format and extend it and write your own set of uh, web service uh, uh, functionality uh, for data transfer like uh, we have uh, extensions like ws underscore uh, um, uh, security which which takes care of authentication and security uh, related stuff on a SOAP message. So it is easily easily extensible provided you know the format of writing um, a XML uh, um, uh, code. And it is neutral because it supports most open protocols not only HTTP it supports SMTP that is simple mail transfer protocol or even it supports TCP. So it is independent because it does not follow any uh, programming model in particular uh, since it is a sole XML message on its own. 
So uh, how does a SOAP message look? Like I've been stressing from the beginning.